Welcome to a very special episode of the Animator Guild podcast. In this episode, I sit down to interview Stefan Schwellness, aka Shushinus, the voted winner of the Animator Guild Contest 2021 with his short film, Falling Food Physics. This entry was also the category winner in Animation and Originality, and this was by no means a one-off for Stefan. He has been quietly and diligently working on his esoteric sci-fi animations from his home in Germany for over two decades. He has traversed pretty much every medium of film, including VFX, 2D and 3D animation, stop motion and live action. I was incredibly curious to virtually meet the man with a unique vision the likes of which we are rarely introduced to. I highly recommend that you check out his channel and social media after this. If you do venture onto his channel, you will see things. His animations can be graphic in every sense of the word, so just be ready, prepare yourself for an intense experience, prepare yourself for your mind to be blown. Now, let's begin the interview with Stefan Schwellness, aka Shushinus. Enjoy. Stefan, aka Shushinus, it's amazing to to see you and, and be able to talk face to face with you. How are you? I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous too, so that's okay. We're both a bit nervous. Uh, for mm. anyone listening, I'm at a pub right now, so there'll be a bit of ambient noise occasionally, I, I expect. But I don't know how this will, how the audio quality will, will sound, but hopefully, hopefully not too bad. How do I sound to you? Okay. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> The purpose of this is, you know, Mm. we were all so impressed by your animation, Falling Food Physics. And so I'm sure I'm not the only one who is really interested in the man behind it and and who you are. And Mm. so I'm going to start with some questions and hopefully you've had enough time to to think of some answers. Mm. I guess let's start at the beginning. Like... How did you get into making animations and and what were some early inspirations for you? Yeah, I, I've always been fascinated by moving images. And uh, when I was seven, my uncle showed me a flip book he made. It was a very simple bouncing ball animation. But uh, at that moment, I understood how film works and this was very inspiring. I immediately wanted to to test uh, myself and uh, to make um, to try all the all the things I have I've been inspired before, and I occupied all the notepads I could find and I started animation uh, ani- animating things like morphing fire effects or perspective like driving on the road and. Yeah, but my inspiration mainly ca- came from visual effects and 3D gra- graphics. 3D was new and exciting in, in the 90s. It was in the 90s, but uh, traditional animation was uh, not that inspiring at the time because it was mostly for kids or a comedy, but there were no uh, really cool epic stories. It was before anime got popular in the West and before the internet and independent animation and I wasn't very versed in technology at that time so it took very long until I got into digital animation. I focused on drawing comics and always imagining them to be movies. I Even before I animated I imagined this to be in motion with filmic ideas in mind and yeah, but the the enlightenment came in 2008 when a school friend showed me an animation he made with with paint and windows movie maker on youtube and i was so hyped uh, i can watch videos online with my crappy computer <laughs> and i can make my own animations and share them with the world uh, well, with the most basic equipment and minimal knowledge I just started experimenting and making stuff. And yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> so, what time? Uh, at what time was that when you were introduced to Microsoft Paint and and Windows Movie Maker? 
in 2000, 2008. And I, I, knew, I knew paint before in, in 1999. I had to draw the first things with, with paint, but I didn't know that I knew that I can make film with the computer. Yeah, yeah, I think I was, I, I was also introduced to Windows Movie Maker and Microsoft Paint. Uh, but for me, my first software was uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and so I would, because it's a slideshow kind of um, mm. software, so I would just create a frame and then go through the, click through the slides for it. But it's interesting how you started on, on Microsoft Paint. And I think mm. a lot of people, one of the points you have made before when you, you've written is that people find excuses when it comes to the software yeah it's cool that you don't uh, use software as an excuse um, mm. anyway I, I'll ask you another question um, so how did you find out about the animator guild contest yeah I, I follow your channel for a while now uh, I don't remember exactly how I found you but it's really quality content thank you I like it and I, and I watch all the videos and so I saw the contest last year, the premiere, and I thought this is a great opportunity to show my own work to a wider audience. Uh, the conditions are very generous, there's no risk and I'm confident with my skills, so let's participate. <laughs> great. Yes, and winning wasn't that important to me actually, I just wanted to make a good film and to be enjoyed by everyone and have a fun time. Yeah, and, and I, I think that paid off for you, didn't it? Because you, you did end up winning. Yeah. And a lot of people have seen your work now and have been really impressed by it. And in fact, I, I watched one of your other videos recently and I saw some people mm. comment on it. And, and this was from yeah. uh, people who had seen your work on the contest and then had gone onto your channel mm. and, and seen your other work. And they had said, I, I would never have found this channel if it weren't for the contest mm. so it's um i think it has worked out for you and and i'm i'm really glad as well and i'm really i really mm. appreciate that you did take the time to to submit and everything and uh yeah I, the, the contest was it was like one of those crown jewels in the contest like oh yes we've got a mm. really good submission here um yeah. so yeah thank you thank you so with falling food physics so that was your entry into the contest and it was actually made as part of a larger series wasn't it mm. which is yeah. uh, i believe is called the essence of psychology yeah and so i think some people when they were uh watching falling food physics they thought wow this is really amazing animation like the mm. quality of the animation is incredible, but what is this? What is the F? And what is uh, what are these two sides? And what is the larger story here? So I thought perhaps we could dig into this and and start mm. with maybe the setting of the series and what these uh, characters are doing in this and this world. I went to your website and and read through all of this stuff, and it's. There's so much to it, and and that's something I really yeah. like about this is that there's just there's so much information on it. Um, first of all, I will link people to that to your website so that they can read it for themselves, yeah. and I would invite them to see the series, but the whole series. But perhaps we can talk about some of the concepts in this. Mm. We have these two sides, right? And and correct me if I'm wrong. We have these two kind of opposing sides the how do you pronounce that yeah. Maschinensäcke 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 and the Freitschlagmänner <laughs> that's my best <laughs> attempt at it I think you'd be better at it explaining it yeah the whole concept goes back to my early childhood I, I have a little bit imagination and always love to invent characters and places and one day I in invented my personal ideal world and corresponding antagonists and I think that is that's not uncommon for a child but I never abandoned that and 
flesh out it more and more to this day. And I added uh, more and more factions. And so when I started making animations for the internet, this is part of this world, but uh, rather only loosely connected to that, so that I can that people are not aren't uh, complete con confused about what I have done because there are so much comics I have done uh, before that, and the story is just huge. And uh, so I started with with a new uh, new start uh, with the animations, but it took some some of the characters over to that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does feel like that. I mean. To, to describe for people who are listening what I'm talking about, there's like entire planets that have been drawn and and yeah. like maps, like really detailed maps that have like so many different diagrams and you've got for the characters, you, you've got like these family trees. So you've got yeah. like the descendants of this family and, and uh, these lineages and it's just like a, a dazzling amount of detail. It's It's just absolutely crazy and i really admire that for one thing and the fact that you've stayed to your roots with this um like you said you developed this uh kind of as a child and you've continued it and you've just built and grown mm. this one big concept to get bigger and bigger and bigger i think it's just incredible and so there's a scene in falling food physics where she um listens to he or she i'm not sure which listens to a recording and there's the the letter f and it's just this static noise and then she she pukes like in this amazing animation she pukes and then just falls down and kind of starts burning and all this ter terrible stuff happens so that must be to do with the freitag lang manner sorry about the yeah. pronunciation so I'll just read what you've written as the description for this um, yeah. kind of faction. So FRMS for short, and it embodies everything despicable, and they are the arch enemies of the Maschinenzaken. They constitute a totalitarian military dis dictatorship, enslaving and harassing people with the warmong warmongering dogmatism predatory economics excessive bureaucracy total surveillance and countless codes of conduct every positive emotion is sin work and war are the only tolerated conditions and their main goal is to spread suffering and misery they are a cosmic plague the culmination of their perfidious reign is the establishment of pseudo-reality in which their victims are oppressed and brainwashed and take over their own humiliation. <laughs> that's, that's an incredible description of like the enemy, the bad guy characters in this. Yeah. And I think it represents perhaps some of your personal philosophy of what you consider to be true and what you consider to be great it's especially with the when that's opposed with the machine and Zaka who are these yeah. they maximize joy adventure and insight there is an ideal combination of relaxed harmonious feel-good atmosphere and stimulating creative chaos yeah these are fantastic descriptions so so I want to ask you um, I know I'm kind of jumping around a little bit with this but would you say that you live by a certain philosophy? And if so, what is that philosophy and, and how does your work reflect that? Yeah, also, uh, I created these affections uh, to represent what I like and dislike. I think uh, this helped me to, to process experiences so I can project the positive and negative impressions into this world and convert it into stories which make emotions more aware and tangible so it's kind of a visual diary and yeah that's uh, is why <coughs> the Freitagland Männer for example I, uh, there are uh, the representation of the absolute evil 
in this in this world and that's why in in the film is when the the f is appears on the recording that this makes the uh, people throw up because they are so evil that when they only hear the uh, their name that it makes them sick <laughs> yeah and I love that. But at the time, I was like, "What's going on?" But uh, now I can I can appreciate it now that I I know more of the context. So the homeworld of Shushinus is Herdel Habadan, and you've done a wonderful yeah. diagram on your website, I think, for it. So it's the cultural center of Shushinus. And it's a hub yeah. in which countless dimensions and timelines converge. Thus, its precise origin and age isn't determined. It's for sure that it is ancient and can look back on a vast history shaped by many high civilizations, but especially by the Maschinensacker, who made it a prosperous realm. Could you, could you speak a little bit more about how you fleshed out this world and how you continuously added and kept on finding more ideas to, to add yeah. to this universe? Because it's so big. Yeah, also, I ad admire complex fantasy universes. I find that really interesting, but I'm not uh, that uh, talented writer that I can yet... Uh, can invent a perfectly consistent world where everything is, is logical and that's why I invented the concept of different timelines and it can change according to my mood my mood uh, the ideas I currently have yes. <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> all right so um, y so yeah you have tried just about every type of visual art there seems to be. You love VFX, especially old school VFX. You've done 2D animation, which which is incredible, by the way. Just if we mm. were just to look at your 2D animation alone, it's astounding. Like the just a thought. Um, you you have a an animation on your channel, which is a traditionally hand drawn piece of animation, where it's kind of rotating around. Uh, someone drawing, perhaps you yeah. drawing, and and the, it's forming with all the muscles and bones and everything. I think that clip, which I'll uh, perhaps share on this podcast, it, that just goes to show kind of your skill just in 2D animation alone, um, which uh, yeah is incredible. But uh, what would you say is the hardest part for you? What, what do you find the most challenging and what did you find the most challenging part of making Falling Food Physics? The, the most challenging part of Falling Food Physics specifically was the, the crowd scene when the, the village is introduced. Oh yeah. It, it wasn't particularly difficult technically, but uh, it's it's just so much to do, so many characters. But and I I thought of your video on animating crowds. Well, the first point is don't animate crowds, and I thought I must do uh, do the scene in the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. I saw you watch yeah. the video and you thought, well, sorry, Howard, I'm gonna do it anyway. I must do it. Yeah, yeah. I was really impressed by that that scene. Just you had layered so much detail and like every character in that crowd was like was drawn with detail and with care and, and were doing amazing unique things so i think you did really well but how long did that how long did that scene take with the one are you talking about the one in the jungle how long did that one take you would you say the scene yeah the scene the, alone a month a month, uh, a month but uh, <laughs> not uh, complete uh, I this person is over many days, but uh, the whole film is almost exactly seven months. Seven months. Uh, right. Yeah, that's uh, that's roughly thirty seconds per month, or one second per day. One second but, per day. <laughs> but I can't tell. I can't t 
tell the exact number of working hours because I take a lot of breaks. It's very exhausting to draw all day long, yeah. frame after frame. But I concentrate on the animation itself. I have no script, no storyboard, no animatic uh, before that. I just have ideas and start animating. Oh, really? And yes, and then uh, try to construct a story around the uh, crazy concepts and visuals I have in mind. And because it takes so long to to animate, I have time to think of the story while making that. And oftentimes I change everything I have planned. Wow. And yeah, when, when I start uh, f making a film, I have no idea how it's going to end. Wow, that's kind so of that's, I didn't know that. And maybe that's because why it turns out so dreamlike, because it's very spontaneous and subconscious in a way. Yeah. Do you find that that's something you do so that the story continues to be interesting to you so that you don't lose interest in the story when you're making it? Yeah, I, I would say if I would do the complete story, thinking of the story uh, before making that, then this is, is this would be boring and mm. you would only work in off what you have planned before and it's more interesting. Mm. Also the different styles, I jump between different styles that keeps it fresh and interesting. Wow. So does that mean that uh, when you, like if you were to have a bad day and you are in a bad mood, would that be reflected in the story, do you think? When I'm in a bad mood, I don't animate. <laughs> right. So it's... <laughs> right. So it's not, not reflected. <laughs> okay, that's good. Cool. That's interesting. So would you, would you recommend for other people to try that? To try making an animated story without a, without a storyboard? Hmm. I would recommend to try different things. I mm. don't know, uh, maybe this works for other ones, maybe not. But always try different things. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, definitely good advice. And we can see from your work that that has led you to some really interesting, making some really interesting visuals and very diverse and rich visuals. So I think uh, good advice, yes. So I, I'm, I'm interested in what you might have learned during your years of animating because you have been animating for a long time. And in fact, you've been mm -hmm. animating for longer than me. Um, and I, I thought I was animating for a long time, but you've been animating for an even longer time and you've made a lot of animations. Would you say you have learned something? Is there something you have learned um, that you didn't know in the beginning? from animating, from your experience animating? Mm. Well, I struggled for a long time to learn 3D mm. because uh, Blender used to have a horrible user interface back in the day. And every time I opened this, uh, the program, I was just frustrated Yeah. all, all the buttons. Uh, but one day I tried it again and noticed that the, the user interface had been overhauled and and there's actually the, the best and most helpful community behind Blender and tons mm. of tutorials and that opened many new possibilities and I learned uh, 3D but I also learned that uh, uh, for, certain, for certain things I prefer the 2D workflow uh, because for example in character animation since you have to draw every frame anyway, it is easier to add subtle movements on the fly, like a blinking eye. You draw, just draw the eyes close in one frame. In 3D, everything is an extra step. You have to go into the bones and manipulate everything. Yeah. And it's often very dry and technical. In fact, I was actually... I was actually wondering about how you make the 3D animation because 
a lot of it does feel very stretchy still like you're still like for example the zombies that you animated in 3d you're still able to like stretch the jaw and really pull and morph those those 3d aspects so i suppose perhaps you you take certain things you've learned in 2d and bring them to 3d and and same with 3d and, and 2d it's really interesting to see what you're able to bring out of each uh, each medium. So you're someone who has shared a lot of online sources. You've linked to to sources on your YouTube channel, which is very helpful. I think. What would you say are some of your favorite online sources to go to learn from to improve your animations? Hmm. I don't really have a source to, to learn. If I need a specific information, I type it in the search bar and take whatever is coming up. And if that's not good, I try the next one. And actually, I like uh, to look at the animation itself. I watch like uh, Sakuga compilations and play it frame by frame and look at the animation to, to learn from it. Mm. That's really good. Um. So let's talk about your inspirations, your sources yeah. of inspiration. Now, I, I had a feeling that the universe, especially because you called it a space opera. So I thought, yeah. ah, he, he must be inspired by Star Wars. Yes, of course. And I also noticed that I think on your Patreon, you shared that you created this uh, Warhammer 40K giant robot machine out of cardboard yeah. and other other objects and it looks really good by the way so then i was thinking ah okay so he likes warhammer as well and these are two different series that have really big universes big expansive universes yeah what are some other ones that you're interested in that you're inspired by um, yeah one of the most important inspirations of my life is the manga Battle Angel Alita ah, by yeah. Yukito Kishiro. Uh, I, by accident, I discovered this in 2006 and I loved everything about it. It was the, the art style, the story, the dark the humor, everything was great and this really changed my, my own style and influenced how I draw characters and Oh, I construct stories and world building. Yeah, yeah, I can see yeah. that now. I, I, that, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. And you have a lot of cyborg sort of mixtures yeah. between humans and technology. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and, and of course, they made a film of it recently, so they brought it back. So I yeah. think a lot more people are aware of Alita Battle Angel nowadays. Yeah. Did you see the film? Yes, I, I saw it. I, I waited for it for many years. <laughs> and it was surprisingly good. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. It's a shame that it didn't uh, perform very well. I, I don't know, not many people went yeah. to see it, but but it was, yeah, it was good. One inspiration I like to tell is the, the, the uh, one of my favorite animated movies is uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky, mm. and I like to talk about it because uh, I watched it the first time without any expectations. It, it was on TV, and I thought, "Oh, anime, let's let's try this," and I was totally surprised by the quality of that uh, film. Uh, I missed the, the beginning, the intro, but I started in the when the skyship is there and the pirates attack the skyship and that it was really exciting. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I like the uh, the style of how they the, the timing and spacing of the of the action scenes. There is this one scene where the robot fires the beam out of his eye and then the camera oh, yeah. turns and you see the explosions uh, in the background <laughs> or yeah that's that was very impressive 
It actually makes me think of um, another thing you've you've mentioned before that I thought was interesting, where you basically said that you don't like to draw dialogue scenes and you like to cut straight to the action. Yeah. So you want you want explosions, you want chases, you want fight scenes, sakuga. Yeah. You and you will just try to make your series so that it just packs all of the good stuff in all of that stuff that you really like yeah. the action and just leaves out the other stuff yes uh, story is important many many people say story is the most important thing and the visuals only serve the the story i think that's that's right but uh, as i said i'm not that uh, that good uh, a writer so i think i concentrate on the visuals Many people use it as an excuse to to be lazy mm. with the animation, and uh, I think not that many uh, people do this. So I I make visual overkill. Yeah, it is like that. that's how I would imagine. Uh, ex that's a good way of explaining it. Visual overkill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so that has two purposes, doesn't it? Because it's yeah. it's what people want to see and mm. it grabs you straight away instead of just making you want to turn to something else and oh never mind this instead it, it makes anyone who's watching is like oh i've got to i've got to watch this but also for you it keeps it interesting and yeah. that's how perhaps I, i'm guessing that's how you're able to have continued to make so much animation over so many years You've made animation for yeah. like over over ten years now, and yeah. and you make a lot of it as well. Like uh, you know, every, more than once a year you put out a big animation. So that's a really interesting combination, I think. Yeah, maybe I'll try it. <laughs> I'll I'll move on to another question. Um, is there any advice you would give to people? Who are looking to get into animation and perhaps develop a fictional universe of their own? Yeah, I, I don't want to tell platitudes like be yourself and be authentic, but I think it's important. Yeah, everyone can learn techniques, but if you want to stick with it and really grow, you have to be authentic and love what you do and really enjoy it. And that's why. I think you should uh, be playful and just experiment. That's also a reason why I use uh, free software. If, if you use expensive software or materials, that's uh, holding you back because if you fail, then you, you have, have lost something. And with free software, there's no risk and you can experiment and try new things. And that makes it easy to put out more stuff. Okay, that's interesting. So I that's um, that's made me remember what I wanted to ask you. So with this work, I mean this this uh, these animations that you make must take a lot of time. I know they take a lot of time and effort. Um, and and do you have a Patreon account? How do you sustain it? How have you been able to, practically speaking, you know, make so many animations? Are you, I do you want to um, turn it into a business? Do you want to do like, I don't know? Do you want to work for a company, or is there what what ways are you thinking of to sustain it, or or is that something you need to worry about? Well, actually, I prefer to be to be free and, and make what I want completely just only free software so blender is open source yeah. um uh, windows movie maker open source i think you're using a different uh, editor now if i remember yeah but um that way you don't have to spend anything on the animation only your time yeah so let's um think about the future now um what uh, aspirations do you have for the future? What uh, what do you want to happen in the future? Yeah, what do you think? 
the future for you and for making animation? Yeah, my, my plans are actually always finishing the next project. I don't think too far into the future because when I was in school I had three major goals that were end of school day, weekend and holiday. <laughs> because I simply wanted to have my free time and indulge into fantasies and pursue my hobbies. So my goal for the future is to make to make more art and to let my, my world grow bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine what this world will be like in like ten years time for you. I mean it will just be gigantic. I mean you seem to be someone who really lives for this artwork and lives in yeah. in this animated world. Um, do you, do you do you know many people who are like you in that way? Do you have uh, have you met many people who are who are like that, or do you think you are just very very different, very unique? No, I haven't met. I I always wish I would met meet some some way some someone someday, but until now I haven't met anyone. It's mostly. When I uh, asked others to, like, a friend, they had the idea they wanted to make a, a live-action Dragon Ball film for YouTube. They, they have seen some animation on YouTube and then they wanted to make the two. And I say, yeah, let's do this. And then that was it. Nothing happened. Mm. Yeah, I meet a lot of people like that. Does that frustrate you? Yes, a little. But so, <laughs> family and friends, what do you think they think of you? Do you think they, do they, do they watch your animations? Do they see what you make? And uh, are they fans of your work? They have nothing against what I do, but they aren't very creative themselves and aren't, aren't very interested in art or animation and most of the time I show them my works and they look out of the window and talk of the oh, flowers that grow in the, in the garden. <laughs> well, I think you found yeah. a community of people here that are going to appreciate yeah. your, your imagination and the work that you're making, especially me. I know for me, I'm, I'm a big admirer of the animations you have been making. And I think yeah. it, I think you are. The reason I asked that is because I, I think you are like a one in a million person. Because I, I haven't met many people who who would make the kind of things you make and in that level of detail. Mm -hmm. It's very, to me, it, it seems very special that someone would pursue it that far. And the other thing that I want to like call attention to it is your that you've made lots and lots of animations over many years and been diligently putting them out on your channel but ha there haven't been many people up until now who have seen it who have seen your series yeah. does that discourage you at all or do you think that it doesn't matter or would you is there a number of people you would like to see your your series and your your animations uh, no it, it doesn't discourage me because if that was the case i had stopped i would have stopped many years ago but mm. still i'm still doing it because i enjoy it uh, so much to do this myself that this is uh, i would even make this if no one would see this yeah of course, it's it's uh, nice to have some viewers, and some comments. But too much fame is is uh, also a lot of stress, mm. I think. And you have a very nice sort of focus on your animations. Like you've managed to continue to make animations for a long time, and one of your series, I believe, is twenty episodes long. Yeah. 
and the, the runtime total is over an hour. And for just you, just the one person to make over an hour of, of one series is, is quite staggering. So is there anything that you do in your day-to-day -day life or anything that you decide to not do, to decide to not be a part of, so that you can keep that focus on your work? No, I, I have actually no idea now what I deliberately not do. It's just I'm very introverted and don't have that many friends and I have the time. I've always been dealing with myself and yeah. What does your so, daily routine look like? Well, at the moment I stand up, eat breakfast, <laughs> and there is no uh, routine. Really, I, I animate when when I feel like it. Mm. And you must feel like so, animating very often. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel so often for me. I I watch a lot of videos. In between and often do less than I actually want would to do. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. I don't feel as disciplined as it might look for for an outside viewer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks for for me as an outside viewer, it looks like you're very disciplined. But I suppose yeah. that's uh, maybe we we could always do more. It's what it seems like. Yeah, you know, oh, what if I could not watch that video and just go right ahead and and just spend all of my time uh, animating? But it's interesting that you say you you only you animate when you feel like it. Um, yeah. What what would you say to someone who wants to be an animator but doesn't feel like animating a lot of the time? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't met many people who who want to animate or ask me what to do. So I can only speak for myself and I have that intrinsic motivation to do so. But if you don't really want that, then it's difficult to, to do that. Mm, yeah. If you, um, if you get like stuck on an animation problem, do you have a process for how you get unstuck, how, how to solve the problem? Uh, the good thing about doing it on my own and don't have a client is that I can change it anytime I want. If I have a problem and it don't go forward, I simply let it be or think of something else mm. I could make, like one of the most ambitious scenes I actually haven't included into the film. I I had planned to make a more elaborate zombie battle in the in the flashback. <laughs> more elaborate. But it was too complicated because I I would need a some a crowd simulation. Mm. And I can't do that by now. So it, it was too complicated and I cut that out. So that was like at the limit of how far you were willing to go for a, for a shot. Yeah. Where else do you decide to to say, okay, that's enough. That's too. That's too much. Um. Maybe I'm. In some cases, I'm a perfectionist, but not in every case. Like, for example, in when you have, like chroma key shots and there is a, a, the edge that I do everything to make the edge perfect. Mm. I don't do this, I let it be. There is an, an, a blue or green rim about uh, around the thing. I think that that's, that's not a problem. It's, I like it when there are some signs of, of a human yeah. behind it who made it instead of everything being perfect. It's quite charming, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the charm of self-made. And that, that actually reminds me of Star Wars as well, because I, I believe yeah. that um, George Lucas was 
very in a hurry with a lot of the shots and and was not able to to key out everything perfectly in those in the shots with the X fighters and things and so yeah. when we saw that you know when it was released we could see some of the the imperfections and later he wanted to go and change it and people said no don't change it we like it we like yeah. how we like that the charm of not having things perfect so yeah. yeah definitely a lesson there that i think is really really interesting yeah to anyone listening i'm 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 gonna link all of your all of your stuff in the description of the the video and, and i'm gonna recommend to everyone to to check them out and to watch your your series um I, the the one that i i found that was very good as well that i that you released recently and this was you know the first one of your other works that i saw was um clothes make the man which i yeah. thought was um was very funny actually you know how it was like a fashion show and then the adversaries were going after the the clothing and they thought you know so they were just throwing their clothes off and then they were just like punching the clothes so um yeah. That's one I'm going to recommend to people as well. Yeah, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to say before um, before we finish? I don't want to leave anything unsaid if you have more notes that you can say. Yeah, so here's a question. You asked the, the styles. Cause yeah, I oh yeah, the styles, different, yeah. Different styles in one film. Mm. So like as i i've already said i like variety in the process and originally i wanted to make two series parallelly parallelly one in 3d and one 2d but we don't come forward this way so i decided to pull it together and combine it into one series and i assigned the different styles to different timelines or dimension of this world so the, the setting specifically created for the Psycho Essence series is in 3D and everything that is a continuation of the previous series, a deposit one, it's in 2D or mixed media. And pixel art represents the archive past, like the, the past, the, the land of low resolution, which <laughs> is the past that is accessible through time travel. Yeah, and the characters swap styles depending on which timeline they are currently affecting. That's yeah. incredible, yeah. And, yeah, and for, for spaceships I use practical miniature effects that has no in-universe reason. I just do it to to honor practical effects because so many people tell they admire the classic Star Wars battles, yet the usage of these techniques is extremely rare among fan films. I yeah. often search for fan films, but uh, n never anyone does use the practical effects. So I, I want to to use this and keep this amazing art form alive yeah yeah and and you've got shots like you use it very well like you, you know they they teleport and then when they end up on the other side of the teleport it's in 3d but you can recognize that the characters are the same it's just the 2d version and the 3d version and you've also got these portals you've got this amazing shot where it goes through the portals and with each portal, there's like a different uh, environment and different mediums yeah. being used. It's just, wow, it's amazing. Yeah. So I love this. I love this combination you have with the 2D, 3D and VFX. And even like this kind of video game, like low resolution. Incredible. Incredible. Really cool. Yeah, I'm sure I haven't seen all of your animations, so I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch all of them and they, they're just yeah. They they expand my mind, you know. It's just they they expand what's possible for me. Um, what I think maybe previously I thought no, that's too crazy, that's too impossible. I'll think no, Shushinus did it. It's not it's not impossible, and it's not too crazy. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's it. I think that wraps it up. Uh, 
if you're happy to to finish that yeah okay i have nothing else to say <laughs> all right um i think well i all i have to say is um thank you again for uh for agreeing to do this call and uh and i wish yeah. you the very best in your animations and in life yeah thank you goodbye i'll see you later bye goodbye stay in touch bye